Hello everyone. Now we are going to talk about internal forced convection. Okay, and if you remember from our first slide, the forced convections can be internal and external. External are for simple geometries, and for internal flows we can have the circular and non-circular geometries. And for each of them we have the laminar case and the turbulent case. Okay, if it is laminar or turbulent, it doesn't matter. We have the constant wall heat flux case and the constant wall temperature case. For each of it okay and then for turbulent flow we use correlations okay and for laminar flow we have the formula but for entry length again we have the correlations okay. correlations but the rest for laminar flow we can use the formula and uh, since laminar flows are simple to solve we have the mo most of the time we have formula for laminar flow but for turbulent case it is very difficult to solve the uh, flow with turbulent case and therefore we are most of the time using correlations okay. and uh, for internal forced convection we have said that there are two cases one is that the constant heat flux constant heat flux and the other one is constant ts and here we have one example which is the solar collector okay this solar collector is a case for constant heat flux why because the sun this one is sun heat flux sun heat flux incident on this solar collector is constant okay it changes per day but for some time of the day it is constant then it can change when it is constant again okay. therefore this is constant heat flux case and also this is the condenser of the refrigerator this is also a constant heat flux because the room heat flux that falls on it is constant and the last case is we have the tube here and there is fluid inside that tube and there is fluid that flows over it and if you assume that the temperature of the uh, of the free stream is the same as the surface temperature of this one let's say that ts is same as t infinity but inside that fluid tube we have different temperature and then we can say that this one is constant surface temperature and this one is more rare but this one is more common okay now we will first recap what we know from fluid mechanics is that when you have the internal flow the boundary layer grows from both sides and meet at some point inside the domain okay and this point where the boundary layers meet up to that point we call it entry length okay. and from this point on we have fully developed flow and here this is for velocity boundary layer and this one is for the thermal boundary layer for velocity boundary layer inside these lines here we have if you have the point here the velocity is to infinity here the velocity is to infinity here velocity is to infinity but outside if you have different velocities here u1 here u2 and here u3 and here u4 different velocities but if you plot the profile you will have a profile something like this one inside that h you will have parabolic profile then it is constant okay this one is constant and then it decreases in a parabolic manner again and this part is called the core region or inviscid part if you remember and this part is the boundary layer this one and that one and from this point on the profile doesn't change you have the fixed profile something like this one okay this one exactly the same it doesn't look different okay they are the same profile doesn't change therefore it is called fully developed flow similar case we have the thermal boundary layer here you have t infinity and then you have the boundary layer growing and meets at some point okay. inside that domain you have t infinity everywhere t infinity but outside it you have different temperatures t1 t2 t3 and the walls let's say this is at ts and if you draw the profile here you will have something like this one 
here the temperature is Ts okay and then this temperature drops to T infinity then it is T infinity again and then it increases to Ts again so here it is Ts and this point everywhere it is T infinity this one is T infinity and uh, from this point on you have the fully developed flow again this is called thermally fully developed flow and this one is called hydrodynamically fully developed flow and for external convection external convection problems we have used the heat transfer as h a s t s minus t infinity okay. but for internal cv problems okay, t infinity is not a reference because if you look at it here you have different profile and this temperature is more than t infinity and you don't have any t infinity more okay this one is more than t infinity and everywhere you have the temperature more than t infinity therefore this is not a reference okay not reference for the internal flow for internal flow we are using reference as the average temperature okay this average temperature is also called the mean temperature and it's also called the bulk temperature so what is average temperature average temperature is say that i have a temperature profile something like this one okay. here everywhere it is ts and it is ts here and it drops to some intermediate value and increases increases to ts and everywhere you have different temperature than ts Okay, this is the profile and this uh, fluid cross section let's say that this fluid this is the fluid cross section okay. this fluid cross section has some energy okay. what I can do that I will have the same energy this is E total energy okay. I can use the same energy but with average temperature, say that I have temperature something like this one, temperature is constant and the uniform. Okay. okay. What you see here is that I have T average, okay, and the same energy, energies are the same, but here you have the variable T's and here I have the constant T's. Okay. I have represented the same energy with T average okay or it is also called mean temperature okay. how do we do that so if the energy is that energy here can be represented by the enthalpy of the fluid okay enthalpy of the fluid if you remember it so let's first do easiest part the average part enthalpy of the fluid will be m dot cp and the T average or T mean or I can write this one as rho Again, u average because if in so here you have different velocity profile at each section. Therefore, I will use average velocity, and then you will have the area, area of this cross section, and then CP, and then mean temperature. And for this part, I will write the rho. U is not average; u is variable because you will have an, a variable u as here. Okay, u change. Therefore, u. Okay. And then I will take small elemental area here, dA. This is small elemental area. This one is dA. If it is dA, then temperature here it is constant, T, because the area is so small that the temperature doesn't change across it. Therefore, I will have the T here. And then if you look at the similarity, you will have the rho, U area, temperature, and then you should have the Cp. Okay these two values should be equal to each other so I will write it here as I use a different color so you will have a row u t c p d a will be equal to row u average area c p t m okay. rows cancel out c p cancel out and you will have t mean or t average u t d a divided by the area Okay. and since this one is the total energy of this cross-section this one is for small area I will integrate it 
for the overall area A to get the total energy. Okay, this one is for energy for small, small cross section, but I should integrate it. Therefore, I will integrate for overall area. Okay. And this one divided by U average. Okay. And this one will give you the average temperature. Okay. Another method to understand the average temperature is that this is also called mixing cup temperature. Say that I have a pipe here. Here I have T1, here I have T2, here I have T3, T4, etc. at this section. Okay. What I am doing is that I am opening a hole here, there is a hole here, and filling, this one is the cup, okay. filling cup with that fluid. Okay. Then they will mix, and after mixing you will have T average because if I put a thermometer here, this thermometer will show me the average temperature. Okay. This is the second way to understand what we mean by the average temperature. Here you have the variable temperatures, but after mixing you have one temperature which is Tm. Therefore, it is also called mixing cup temperature. Okay. Mixing cup temperature or mean temperature or bulk temperature. Okay, so we will first look for the constant surface heat flux and the change of temperature and the heat transfer coefficient. First, the heat transfer coefficient H. Okay, and if you remember, we have said that the boundary layers grow and meet at some point. Okay, and here you will have inside that one, we have said that you have the T infinity and outside you have different temperatures. Okay, and in that direction, Heat is only flowing by conduction because velocity is zero. It will be Ts minus Tm divided by delta T. Delta T is this thickness. Okay. And uh, if it is constant surface heat flux, we know that this Q dot S for any part, if you take this part constant, if you take this part constant, any part you can take, this one is constant. Okay. And Q dot Y is K A T S minus T M by delta T. And if I say that, that is exactly the same equation as T S minus T M, Newton's law of cooling, because in Y direction there is no advection, therefore this should be equal. So areas cancel out, T S T M cancel out, and H is K by delta T. Okay. And therefore, since that part, delta T increases from zero, when it is zero, H is very large, okay. should not cross it, when it is fixed, so you have the delta T is equal to R here, then it gets its constant value, then it is constant everywhere, okay, at this point where it gets its constant value is fully developed full, okay. and now we look for the half Tm and the Ts change. For that one, we will write energy balance for this elemental volume. Okay, here you have the in, and here you have the out, and here you have the again in quantity. So if I write the first law, I will have the in quantity, which is the flux into area that's falling on it. This one is flux that falls on it into area that the area that we have here that will be equal to enthalpy in. Okay. So here you'll have in is same as out, okay? So this one is in, enthalpy is in, therefore this should be at, this should be added, will be equal to m dot enthalpy out, okay? And for the enthalpy in, I can write it as m dot cp tm, and for enthalpy out, I can write m dot cp Tm plus small temperature change across it. Okay, a small temperature change across it. And if it is small elemental volume, and As will be equal to perimeter into this thickness. And if I say thickness is dx, very small thickness, and the perimeter into dx will be this As. So it will be perimeter into dx. So if I write it, Q dot S 
into perimeter into dx will be equal to now I will write this one as m dot cp dtm okay then dtm by dx will be equal to q dot s perimeter by m dot cp okay this will be the result and we know that q dot is constant this one because constant surface it flux perimeter is constant m dot is constant cp is constant therefore this one is constant if the derivative of some quantity with respect to x is constant then it means that it is linear okay it is linear so tm chains linearly with the pipe from the beginning till the end so t inlet is here t outlet is here and you will have the linear change now we are looking for the ts for ts we will do again the energy balance for the energy balance i will take the pipe volt here this is pipe volt you have the q dot s a s that q dot s a s from this point on becomes q dot cb okay. and q dot s a s is exactly the same as q dot cb because whatever falls on the pipe wall is transferred from the pipe wall into the fluid as convection okay. if you neglect the thickness of the pipe wall and then you will have q dot s into AS will be equal to instead of Q dot CV I can write H A S T S minus T M. Okay. And from this chart we know that H is constant after fully developed flow. Okay. So if I say that after FDF because before FDF H changed. Therefore I've applied this one only after FDF. So AS cancel out. You will have T S minus T M is equal to q dot s divided by h okay this one is this one is constant after fdf this one is also constant this is constant always qs always constant and h is constant after fdf okay after fdf it is constant therefore the difference between this one and that one is some constant quantity if it is tm then something with a constant change should be ts with the difference of q dot s by h doesn't change okay so it is see after fdf they are linear both of them are linear okay and if you go back to before fdf now before fdf okay ts minus tm again it is q dot s by h this one is constant again even for FTF, but H has very high value. Since H has high value at the before FTF, it means that TS and the TM should be very, very small. The difference between them should be very, very small. You go back to here, the difference is very, very small, and then you have the growth, which is exponential or some other function. Okay? It is not linear. That grows and you get the TS again. This is for the constant surface heat flux. Now we'll do the same case for the constant surface temperature and for the constant surface temperature again we'll do the same steps energy balance and find half TS and the TM chains and also H. H value again with the same logic as the previous one you will have the delta T at the beginning it is much less than 1 therefore H value is very high with the same logic and then it becomes constant. TS value okay ts value it says constant surface temperature therefore it should be constant no problem now you are looking for half tm chains okay therefore we should first write the energy balance for this elemental element volume so here you have the ts that falls here you have the first the enthalpy in you have the enthalpy out okay? and you have q dot cv I write energy balance this one has a thickness of dx so you will have m dot enthalpy in plus q dot cv will be equal to m dot enthalpy out okay from in is same as out the first law okay this is first law for steady systems so i can write m dot instead of enthalpy in i will write cptm instead of q dot cv i will write as h 
Ts into Ts minus Tm. Ts is constant, Tm change. That will be equal to again m dot. Instead of h out, I will write Cp Tm plus Dtm. Okay? And I can write it as Has Ts minus Tm will be equal to m dot Cp Dtm. Instead of as, I will write again parameter into dx, and this one will be equal to h parameter into dx ts minus tm will be equal to m dot cp dtm. Okay, this is a very simple differential equation, first order linear, and then I will use the famous rule which says that separate and I then integrate. First, I should separate it and then I will integrate it. I am using different color here. Okay, so then I will write it as h parameter into m dot cp into dx will be equal to dtm by ts minus tm. Okay, as you can see here, so if I integrate it, parameter is constant, m dot cp is constant, but h value changes. Okay, what I will say that. I will take h bar or h average instead of this function I'm taking some average function like this one okay this one is average therefore I will write it as average h because h value changes and then I can integrate this one easily otherwise it is impossible to integrate I will write the limits here the limits will be from 0 when it is 0 Tm is T inlet. Okay, it is again Tm inlet, but we are writing T inlet. Okay, whenever we say T inlet, it means Tm inlet. It doesn't matter. And at outlet or at any x, let's take any x. For any x, you can take L here, or you can take any x value here. Then you will have the Tm. Okay. Now let's integrate this quantity. Okay, I will add the one more slide. So if I write the formula here we have, so then h parameter you have m dot cp for dx, it is from 0 to x, and on the right hand side I will have dtm divided by ts minus tm, it is from t inlet to tm. Okay. So then if I integrate, you will have h parameter divided by m dot cp into x. That will be equal to this part will be the ln function. You will have a negative ln because this one is negative here. So ln ts minus tm that bounds as t inlet and the tm. And that one will be equal to negative ln ts minus tm divided by ts minus t inlet. And if I write an exponential function, then I will have ts minus tm will be equal to t, uh, ts by t inlet will be equal to e to the power of negative h parameter divided by m dot cp into x. Okay. And as you can see from here, tm is exponential. Okay. Because Ts is constant, Ts is constant, the inlet is constant, Tm is changing exponentially with x. Okay. Therefore, as you can see from here, the graph is exponential graph. And for the heat transfer, let's write it. So if I have the point here as 0, another point here x, I have integrated it, then the heat transfer by Cv. If I write the first law, okay, that one will be equal to enthalpy change from x to 0. It will be enthalpy change at x and at 0. So that will be equal to m dot cp tm because we have set that at x. At x, temperature is tm, and at 0, temperature is t inlet. Okay. 
and you'll have m.cp minus t inlet mcp okay? and then this one will be equal to m.cp tm minus t inlet okay instead of m.cp i can write this relationship over here so let's go back to here so i have m.cp this one is equal to h perimeter x by this ln function so instead of that one i can write it as h perimeter h perimeter in the x divided by negative ln ts minus ln ts minus tm divided by ts minus t inlet okay so instead of that one i can write this one then i will have q dot cv will be equal to h perimeter into x that is surface area as into so there is negative sign here i can put the negative sign here for that one and then i will have t inlet minus tm okay, divided by ln ts minus tm divided by ts minus t inlet okay and as you can see from here so that the heat transfer by cv is depending on the temperature change by an exponential manner or by logarithm manner so this part here is called log mean temperature difference temperature difference okay or lmtd and therefore i can write it as h a s l m t d okay and to this temperature change from inlet to n and that is t s minus t m t s minus t initial okay good okay this to make this l m t d in a better form so i have here l m t d as t so sorry for that it is lmtd is t inlet minus tm divided by ln of ts minus tm divided by ts minus t inlet okay and instead of t inlet minus tm so I, what i can do is that to make it similar with the downstairs i can add ts here and the minus ts okay then t inlet minus ts and the tm minus ts and therefore you will have so i will make it similar to that one ts minus t inlet and therefore i will have negative here ts minus t inlet okay and plus ts minus tm ts minus tm divided by ln ts minus tm divided by ts minus t inlet okay and this one will be equal to so I will call it delta T M minus delta T inlet divided by ln delta T M divided by delta T inlet. Okay. That is to make the formula simpler and easier to uh, remember. Okay. Now we'll talk about the entry length. Okay, for the entry length if you remember if you have a pipe something like this one you will have the growing of the boundary layer grows and at some point you get fully developed flow and until some till that point you will have this entry length okay. and the correlations we have are fully developed flow part most of the time okay and to be sure that the equations are true or not we have a check for laminar case as well as a turbulent case for the laminar case if it is velocity boundary layer velocity boundary layer okay the length of the pipe should be at least 0 0.05 into Reynolds number into d to be a fully developed flow for the thermal boundary layer so this one is thermal boundary layer okay length should be at least length of the velocity fully developed flow into Prandtl number 
and for turbulent case they are equal to each other and the length should be at least 10 times the diameter so if I give a simple example for this one example say that I have a pipe and with a diameter of 5 centimeters okay and L is 20 centimeters and then if I check it if it is fully developed flow or not L by D is L F D F okay This one is 20 by 5 into 4. So, therefore, this one is less than 10D okay? and it is not fully developed flow. It is entry length. This part is entry length. For entry length, we either use graph or correlation. Okay, we will use the graph or you can look for the correlations for the entry length. Graphs have two parts. One is that you have the local values for the nozzle number okay versus this non-dimensional number this is Gratz number okay and also you can have the average nozzle number value and this one is local nozzle number value and the graph has two parts you have the combined entry length combined entry length means that the velocity boundary layer okay and the thermal boundary layer grows at the same time they are growing at the same time this is the combined entry length but this is the solid line you can see the solid line here and till that part it is entry length and from that point on you have the fully developed region where you have the constant values okay. and if it is thermal entry length thermal entry length means that I have a pipe okay let's use another color I have a pipe here Velocity boundary layer is not developing, it is fully developed, but the thermal boundary layer is growing. Okay. So it is hydrodynamically fully developed flow, but thermally entry length. Thermal entry length. Okay. We are using these dashed lines okay, for thermal entry length. Similarly here, we have the average nozzle number and till that part we have the developing part entry region and from that part on we have the lines converging to fully developed region. Here we have solutions for combined entry length for Prandtl number 0.7. These are the circles and we have the squares Prandtl number for 2. These are experimental values and the Prandtl number 5. And also we have equations which is in your book okay, you can look for these equations and uh, these are the charts for that equations okay you can see the chart for the equation is in accordance with the experimental values okay? because these equations have been generated from experiments okay otherwise it cannot be true therefore for the problems first you should check for if it is fully developed flow or not if it is not then you will use this graphs or the correlations if it is the turbulent flow the last part turbulent flow we have lots of correlations Dietz Bolter, Sider Tate or Ginlensky or some of them okay and we will use the easiest one which is the Dietz Bolter relation okay this one says that average nozzle number is 0 0.023 Reynolds number 0 0.8 and the Prandtl number to the power of n and this n is 0 0.4 if it is heated and it is 0 0.3 if it is cooled pipe okay. this one is the pipe you have the mean temperature and you have the surface temperature okay if you are heating the pipe then it is 0 0.4 if you are cooling the pipe in other words if the fluid is hot here environment is cold and then n is 0 0.3 and you are using for the Prandtl number of this range and the Reynolds number for this range and it is only for fully developed under smooth pipes okay. and it is not sensitive to duct shape but okay. this is the four turbulent flow and we have finished for the internal force of convection and we have two examples that we will do in a separate video best wishes